what are some of the emerging treatments? So some of the hopeful uh, treatments that we have coming down the pipeline. So first of all, many of you will be aware that we now have more biologic medications that are available for the treatment of Crohn's disease. And so this includes Stelera and Intivio. And so even in patients where the anti-TNF therapy has failed, in this French study, it's the largest study that's been published to date, it showed that these medications may have a benefit for perianal Crohn's disease. So with Stelera, 40% of patients achieve success at six months. And with Intivio, also known as Vitalizumab, 20% of patients achieve success. So keep in mind that this, these are patients that have already failed other treatments. So this is encouraging. I don't want you to compare these two studies because they are different patient populations. And so it wouldn't be, um, we, we can't directly compare to determine if Stelera or Vitalizumab is better than the other. One of the, one of the therapies that I'm really, really excited about is the idea of mesenchymal stem cells. So stem cells have been used to treat many types of inflammatory conditions. And so mesenchymal stem cells are harvested from patients from the fat pad of their abdomen. So you can get the, the stem cells from adipose tissue. And these are stem cells that can divide over and over again, but not forever. And so that's very important because if you're putting someone else's stem cells into your body, it's something that you have to be careful about because of the immune system. Um, in, in other words, if you were to do a heart transplant or a lung transplant, and you were to transplant someone's organ into yourself, um, you would, because that's a, that organ is uh, immunogenic, you have to be on immunosuppressive medications. Stem cells are different. These type of stem cells are different. These do not create a, an immune response that require us to be on specific immune suppressant agents. Now, stem cells have a number of, of important effects that can help with tissue healing. So first of all, stem cells can regulate the immune system. They can dampen the immune system. They can also move throughout the body to the site of injury. They can promote the production of, of um, blood vessels, and they can promote the production of growth factors. So each of these are important for tissue regeneration. So because of this, it's believed that stem cells may be an important tool to help with healing. So there actually has been a very large clinical trial that was conducted in Europe that has shown the benefit of stem cells. So this is called the ADMIRE trial, and it was published in 2016. And so in this trial, all patients underwent a surgical exam. The surgeons used a suture to close off the internal opening. And then patients were either randomized to receive the stem cells or they received a placebo. So the treatments were injected into the internal opening and then also along the extent of the fistula. The study followed patients until week 24. And here in the orange, these are the patients that receive the stem cells. And in the gray, these are patients that receive placebo. Now it's important to note here that this is not a true placebo because each of these patients underwent the surgical exam where the fistula tracts would have, had, would have been curataged and the patients remained on their normal immunosuppressive therapy. So if they were on Remicade or Humira, that would have, that would have continued. And so what they found from the study is that the group of patients that received stem cells, they were more likely to achieve healing of the fistula tracts, 51% compared to 35. 
And this fistula healing maintained long term. And so this is very important as shown here. So in this clinical trial, you can see that at week 24, the rates of fistula remission remained long term up to one year. And if we compare that to our current gold standard treatment, Remicade, you can see that you get a response initially, but that kind of dwindles off over time. So it's possible that stem cell therapy gives a very robust response. So currently, um, this was proposed to Health Canada. Unfortunately, Health Canada felt that um, more studies were required before they granted access to this medication. Um, the same thing happened in the US. And so there's now a second clinical trial that has just begun and it will be occurring at many sites in Canada. So I know in Ottawa, we have this trial and my colleagues in BC and Toronto, as well as um, some others also have um, of this study. So the last um, potential option that I'm gonna talk about today is the concept of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So this is something that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, so what is hyperbaric oxygen? So for hyperbaric oxygen, first of all, this is a treatment that has been shown to be effective for a number of disease processes, including helping to heal chronic wounds, such as diabetic wounds. And so what happens is patients will go in this chamber and in the chamber, the, the air will be pressurized. And so very similar if you were going diving. And in addition to this, patients breathe in oxygen. And so with the oxygen and the pressure, this will increase the concentration of oxygen in the bloodstream, and it will allow the oxygen to diffuse into tissue. And so this can have a number of beneficial effects. One, it's been shown that this can reduce inflammation. It can increase growth factors. It can mobilize stem cells. And so very similar to what I just mentioned for the mesenchymal stem cells. But in addition to this, the hyperbaric oxygen can help to kill bacteria. And so this is very important for perianal Crohn's disease where the process or the inflammation is driven by um, um, bacteria, bacteria. And so again, that's the reason why we often use combination therapy with antibiotics. So hyperbaric oxygen, very exciting. Um, it's a safe technique. The most common side effect of, of um, hyperbaric oxygen is what's called barotrauma. So if anyone has gone diving, it can you're, you, it feels like there's a lot of pressure behind the eardrums. Um, if there's too much pressure, that can cause your eardrums to pop. Um, but in terms of, it's, that's uncommon and, um, and few other side effects from uh, hyperbaric oxygen. And there actually is some evidence that it might be effective. So this is another meta-analysis that we just presented this year at our national meeting. And so there have been 10 studies to date that have looked at the potential effectiveness of hyperbaric oxygen. So the first part here is looking at fistula response, and the second is looking at fistula remission. And I want to remind you that in these studies, this includes patients, many of the patients in these studies had previously failed our standard therapy. So again, a pretty difficult patient population to treat. And so when we look at response, a total of 118 patients have been studied and 75% of patients responded to therapy. When we look at remission, 60% of patients have responded to therapy. So this is very encouraging but I would caution you in interpreting these studies. They were very small. They did not contain controls. They 
some of them didn't follow patients for very long. So we have to take this information with a grain of salt and we really, really need a randomized controlled trial to study this.